Hi, we're in the next part, so please go and check out um, the previous parts before this in order to figure out your bearings and what it is that I've been, sp I've been speaking all along. Okay, yeah, no, so that's why I accommodated an ex-convict, all right? Um, it's because I'm a child of God. We don't judge prisoners. We don't judge people with disabilities. We don't judge people who don't have homes and cars. We don't judge people who don't have a rap sheet that is impressive according to the standards of this world. We are people of a different status. We've got standards that are heavenly, and we look at the, the soul, the man, the spirit, we don't look at fleshy carnal things because then you will miss out on excellent adoration. You will miss out on a dude that's going to love you better than anybody can ever love you before. And all I wanted was to be loved. All I wanted was to be ad adored, cherished by a man. And for me, it was like, this dude has um, been forgiven much and so he's going to love much. That's why I accommodated him. Okay, let's move on from the reasons why I allowed an ex-con. I bet you understand if you're a Christian. Very forgiving. That is also the platform and uh, the, the, the perfect environment to... Um, abuse a daughter of God or a son of God uh, due to the fact that you know the, the amount of forgiveness and compassion mercy empathy and like overlooking of offense that happens in the church it can cause daughters of God to be infiltrated by some of the most wicked men in the world and vice versa for men too so I mean this is my story and I hope I can heal you with it um, at the end of the day guys you know people by their fruit so even if you end up married to a guy with a bad rap sheet historically if he doesn't bear fruit he's not trustworthy he's still got the sinful nature that the sinful nature that put him in prison in the first place and so if at all he went to prison for domestic violence he's still gonna slap you if he doesn't bear fruit he is still going to kill you if you went to prison for murder but then somehow got set free on parole like you need to check a person by their fruit to know that having a rap sheet of Ted Bundy is now successfully truly a child of God and so can never murder again. You have to know that for a fact. And I had all the evidences yawning, gawking at me to evidence that this guy was not safe. Do you understand? I had everything I needed. Mara, I thought that, ah, you know, everybody makes mistakes. You know, the that whole avenue of leg rooming, the whole doctrine of he who has no sin, let him cast the first stone on some giving people a chance. You know, everybody has to grow. Um, regeneration is not the tenement of sanctification. And sometimes people grow because they have somebody come into their lives and all of a sudden they grow super fast because they're such a great influence. I believed that. And it's not wrong to believe that. But when people are bearing no fruit at all, then you are wasting time you are literally trying to make out of a goat a sheep like the dude's entire nature has not yet been changed and so i had so much evidence but you know i was compromised and i was lonely i was hungry for love i was love thirsty and this dude provided for me during a time when nobody else was caring for my needs Okay, very well. So this dude, how he ended up slipping into my direct message messages. He uh, first commented on a video of mine on YouTube. I ignored him because I don't allow myself to. He spoke about giving me a financial blessing. I don't speak that way to people on YouTube. If or if I comment and I speak with a person in a comment, as soon as it starts to like taper in some funny direction where I get asked for my email and let's chat privately, I walk away right let's keep it online let's keep it in the comments section let's not move into the dms and even if we are in the dms it's a uh, stick in the dms we're never ever going to get to a point where you know my private gmail and this guy was busy trying to give me money and if at all you give a person money you kind of need to get the email address their banking details i was like it's fine it's okay i was busy trying to start my youtube channel and in one of the, vi the video grand chat that he w responded to i was wearing a bump short in my video walking around in the kitchen and i was i, I was not concealed i was indecent and he happened upon all that like like sensual footage and liked what he saw in the carnal mind that he was in and he was like I want this woman he literally got put in his mind an evil spirit that told him pursue and hotly started out by sending me like uh, comments ignored ignored because that's what I just always have done and then he went into my description box uh, in my videos that I, I put there as a default and literally started following me on every social media. He found my, my Facebook and asked for friendship there. And the thing about my Facebook is I accept everybody that asked me for a friend because I'm, I don't know who in the world I might be evangelizing. I don't got to meet you. I'm just accepting you as a friend. That's been my, 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 my um, Facebook policy pretty much ever since, <laughs> ever since uh, I started Facebook, even before I was in the world, uh, ever, ever, even before I was in Christ, right? So when this guy asked for friendship, I accepted, thinking that it's just some person in Jefela that, you know, I don't know where he found me, but I just thought he was among the recommended. You know, when you've got mutual friends, you just kind of end up, you know, anyway, whatever. This guy, I was accepting him among a myriad of other people whose Facebook friendship requests I was accepting. Uh, and then on Instagram, my Instagram page is... Um, 
it's not one of those private ones where you have to approve a person that follows you. You just, like, it's public like that. So he followed me there. He, I, like I said, TikTok, I'm not sure if at all he was on there. It would be one of those um, gravid uh, accounts that don't have a profile pic. And Twitter, I don't think he has a Twitter account. Uh, but of course, then he subscribed to me on Facebook. Not Facebook, but YouTube. I should have known that this is obsessive behavior. I should have known at that stage. You know, when I went to my Instagram and found him as a person that follows me, I should have just known. Because, yo, this is the guy that was on Facebook and now he's on my Instagram. Whoa, like he's just following me everywhere. And he he wrote on my, uh, he commented on like two or three of my videos on YouTube and I ignored him. And then he ended up, he, he then, after I accepted him as a friend on Facebook, he then put a post on my wall. Ne? And I ignored it. <laughs> he was like, this is your brother from my, this is your brother from California. I just want to see if I can give you a financial blessing because the Lord has put it on my heart. This guy went in hard, ignored him. I'm like, hey, but there's some funny, this guy. And now he's commenting on my page. So I then went into, nah, when he put my, uh, when he put it on my wall, I ignored him again. Uh, then he decided to slide into my DMs. This time he, he wrote me in the DM space on Facebook. Never mind my actual wall, okay? And when he then got into my DM space, I was like, yo, this person is not going to stop. So I decided to click on his profile, right? I decided to click on his profile on Facebook to see what this guy's about. And lo and behold, indeed, his entire timeline from pretty much the time that he got out of prison, which was like three years ago, um, Christian content, Christian content, Christian content, like everything he uploaded was nothing but God content. So for me, it was like, uh, maybe this is a genuine guy. And when he said, at first I thought it was a South African dude. And because uh, of my, you know, ambivalence against what South Africans have done to me and have just a close proximity of South African men, I was like, aye, aye, aye. I'm not going to accommodate a South African dude. But then when he said, this is your brother from California, I was like, he's in the US. He's so far away. There's no way that this guy can have funny antics because if he messes up, all I need to do is just ignore him and he'll never see me again. He'd have to get on an aeroplane, Right. So upon realizing that he's got a Christian page on YouTube, most of his content, uh, not YouTube, Facebook, most of his content was Christian. And upon realizing that he's all the way in another continent, right? I was like, okay, I do need the money. So let me see what he has to say. And my response to him was, I don't understand what you want. He then responded by saying, I just want to give you a financial blessing. That's all. I don't want anything from you back. I was like, look, I then, my response was a caveat, basically a disclaimer on some, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I need the help. Right. And I bet you've noticed. However, I understand that if you do give me money, it's a donation and I will thank you for that. But this is not going to end up in a relationship. I literally told him from the get go that you're not going to prosper to win me in any kind of strange, funny way. Uh, very well, this dude was like, man, I just want to give you a, uh, like what the Lord has put on my heart to give you. And then I'll be on my merry way. Like it's nothing. So I was like, ah, he is all the way far away in a distant land. So I guess I could do with the money. Plus it's in dollars. So transfer it into rands and it just balloons. Yo, we organize. Long story short, I've told the story. I'm not going to labor on it. Ultimately, he ends up being like quite the donator in my particular general environment. Uh, know and understand that during this time when I am busy being uh, donated to, I keep on getting dreams of this guy being a Christian. Hmm? Like very prayerful, wearing white robes and praying for me and what have you. I'm getting these dreams of this guy being super holy. But in the dreams, he's wearing white robes, right? But in and of himself, like he's a little bit of a yellow bone. Like he's dark, like super dark, you know, almost like there's a shadow uh, around his face. Nine minutes and 28 seconds. Let's move on to the next part.